I want to solve a Newton's second law problem about pushing a block up an incline. So I'm given that there's this incline relative to the horizontal with angle theta, and there's some block on this incline. And I'm told that uh, Alice is pushing this block up the incline by pushing horizontally on the block. Okay, not a very good picture of a person, but the key point here, I, I want to get on my diagram, is the person is pushing horizontally on the block, and the block is moving up uh, an angle theta relative to the ground. And there's some coefficient of friction between these two surfaces, and I want to know what is the acceleration of the object. Okay, what I like what this what I like about this problem is that it gets some practice with uh, tilted coordinate systems, which is something that uh, we we certainly need practice with. So I, I need to apply Newton's second law to this problem. My object is going to be my block. What are the forces on the block? Well, there's gravity. Of course. Well, there's this also this contact force between the uh, incline, yeah, we can call it incline, and the box here. And there's also this uh, contact force of uh, Alice. Okay. And so uh, this this contact force we is is the this pushing force. And that's sort of one of our givens. And so the, we have two contact forces, one of which we probably want to break into normal and friction. That's the, the contact force of the ground on the block. But since I'm given the pushing force that Alice ex is exerting on the block, I don't really want to break that up into uh, normal and frictional components. And so that's one of the things that you just need practice with by doing problems is, is to get an intuition for when you want to take a contact force, break it into components, uh, normal and, and frictional, and when you just, you just want to stick with the contact force itself. Okay. So let's do a free body diagram for this uh, problem. I have my box here. And since I'm working with an incline, what I like to do when, when I have that is, is get myself two sets of axes. One that's parallel and perpendicular to the ground, and the other that is parallel and perpendicular to the incline. I kind of miss my center there. And this really helps me align my forces to be able to figure out my geometry. And I have these two sets of of axes and I know from my picture that that angle that angle is theta and then because of geometry I know that that angles theta that angles theta and that angles theta so you can see getting this out at the beginning can really help in figuring out what direction the forces are and what those directions are relative to each other okay so now I have sort of a, a, a some axes, and now I want to identify the forces. Okay, first the force due to gravity. That's easy enough. The force due to gravity points straight down always. So there's force due to gravity. We give it some clearly identifiable notation. Okay, what are the other contact forces? Okay, there's a contact force due to Alice, and we're told that she pushes horizontally. So that is a horizontal force from the agent to the object. So that points to horizontally to the right. And I'll give that some notation. I'll call that uh, pushing, P vector for pushing force. And I'm not going to break that into normal and uh, 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 frictional components because I'm just given that it's she's pushing horizontally with some magnitude. So I'm just going to keep it in its original vector form. All right. So the contact force between the incline and the box. Okay, so the box is sliding relative to the incline, and so I think I want to break this force into its normal and vector components. So the normal component of the incline on the, the box is going to point perpendicular to the surface of contact between them, and here's the surface of contact between them. So it's the normal force is perpendicular to that, pointing from the agent to the object. So I'll call that, there's the normal force. And so now I need the frictional force, which is parallel 
to the surface of contact between the two objects and it and its kinetic friction since the object is sliding and the direction is going to point in the uh, opposite direction of the motion of the object relative to the agent. Well the object is the box moving up and so that means the frictional force of the agent relative to the object is going to be in the opposite direction. So there's a frictional force parallel to the surface and I'll just call that F and it points down the incline. Again you can see why it's so useful to have these axes set up this way originally and so all my vectors lie along one or the other axes. Okay, so now I want to apply Newton's second law to this problem. Before I do that, I have to have a coordinate system. So what sort of coordinate system should I have? Well, wh I could use this coordinate system where I have plus x horizontal plus y, but I don't think I want to. So why would I want to choose another coordinate system? Again, I'm going to use the context from the problem guide my choice of coordinate system. Here, the motion of this object is entirely along the incline, which means I know that there is no acceleration perpendicular to the incline. If I, in fact, not do that, but choose as my coordinate system parallel and perpendicular to the incline, then I know I will only have a component of the acceleration along the x-axis. I will not have components of the acceleration in both dimensions. And I, I mean, I don't know if that's simpler, but my intuition from solving lots of these problems tells me that if I can limit my acceleration to only one component, that can greatly simplify my problem. So I'm going to choose as my axes, the axes parallel and perpendicular to the incline. All right, I want to apply Newton's second law to this problem. And Newton's second law tells me that the vector sum of all the forces on this object, and I have well, four, I've broken the one contact force into two components. The vector sum of all of them is equal to the mass of that one object times the acceleration of that one object. I like doing this because that is exactly Newton's law, and then I can just write my vectors in component form. Okay, so my normal force in my choice of coordinate systems over here has zero component in the x-axis, and it has its entire magnitude, which I just represent as n, in the positive y-axis. And it's positive because I look and go back to my picture to verify that. Okay, so my frictional, my frictional force has a magnitude equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And from my picture, I see it points in the negative i-hat direction. Again, I always find the magnitudes of my components and then assign the direction given the diagram in the picture. Okay, and then it has nothing in the y-axis. The pushing force I'm given has some magnitude, and from my picture, I'm sorry, I need for the put it's in the it's in the horizontal direction, and so I need to find its components on the x and y axes that I'm given in the problem. Okay, so I take a line from the tip of my vector and, and take it to the axis such that it makes a right angle. And now I can find the lengths of these sides using basic trigonometry. And so the length of my vector, the x component, is the length of this side of that triangle, which is the magnitude of the force times cosine theta and it is in the positive x direction, given my choice of coordinate system. This is positive x, this is positive y. So to find the y component, I want this, the length of this side of the triangle, 
And so that is uh, P sine theta y hat, and from my diagram I see that's in the negative y hat direction. Again, I find the magnitudes of the components from basic trigonometry assign the sign given the picture. The force due to gravity now, I'll have to do the same thing. Take a line from the tip of the vector such that it makes a right angle of the coordinate axes. So now I want to find the component along the x-axis. Well, that's this component here. And again, because I cleverly <laughs> had my axes from the beginning set up, I know that that angle is theta. So I know that the x component of gravity is the magnitude of gravity, mg sine theta. I had, and from my picture, I see that's in the negative x direction. So then in the y direction, the y component of this force, I'm looking, the magnitude of the y component is the length of this triangle. The length of that triangle is just the magnitude, the hypotenuse of the force, cosine theta, that's y-axis, and what direction? It's in the negative y direction. Magnitude from basic tri trigonometry, sine from the picture. That way uh, you almost never get it wrong. All right, so also now, what, where's the acceleration? Because I conveniently put my uh, axes along the incline, I have a mass times an acceleration in the x direction, but none in the y. So now I have two uh, relationships between all my parameters. I have the, the, uh, the x components, sum of all the x components of the forces, and the sum of all the y components of the forces. And so I can now write those two uh, relationships. The first one, I have the, the, in the x direction, negative to the coefficient of friction times the normal force plus the pushing force cosine theta minus mass times acceleration to gravity sine theta is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Acceleration is what I'm trying to find. And so in the y direction, I kind of run out of space there, I have the normal force minus the pushing force sine theta minus mass times acceleration due to gravity cosine theta, and that is equal to zero. So I, I know the pushing force, I know the mass, acceleration due to gravity, I know the angle. What I don't know is the normal force and the acceleration. But just looking this, I, looking at this, I think it's pretty straightforward the direction I need to go to solve. I can use this e equation to solve for the normal force and then substitute it into there. So the normal force is equal to uh, pushing force sine theta plus mass times acceleration due to gravity cosine theta. If I substitute that into the into this one, I get negative mu coefficient due to friction, and then I'm substituting in the normal force uh, pushing force sine theta mass acceleration gravity cosine theta. So that was all this term. Now I have pushing force cosine theta minus, and I'm getting these terms, mass acceleration due to gravity sine theta is equal to mass of the object times the acceleration. Okay, well that seems, uh, well I have a lot of terms there, but let's see if we can combine some of them make it uh, look more aesthetically pleasing. I have two terms that have the pushing force in it and two terms that have mass times the acceleration to gravity. Let's group those. So if I, I group this term and this term, pull out the pushing force, I get P cos cosine theta minus uh, coefficient of friction sine theta. And then if I take these two terms and combine them, I get plus mg times uh, cosine theta 
actually let's let's go uh I have a minus here that comes in. So let's pull that out a minus mg times since both of these terms are in fact negative, I have minus mg sine theta plus coefficient of friction cosine theta. That's from this term. And those together is equal to mass times acceleration. And so now if I have my solve for my acceleration then is the pushing force over the mass uh, cosine theta minus coefficient sine theta minus g sine theta plus coefficient cosine theta. Okay. And while that, I mean, it's kind of a long expression there, uh, if I, I know solving it was really just, just the basic of two equations to unknowns, solve for n and substitute it into the original expression. Uh, does this make sense? Well, g is larger, a is smaller, that makes sense. m is larger, a is smaller. The pushing force is greater, a is is larger. So that that all makes sense. Uh, what happens if, if cosine goes to zero? But let's let's uh, not cosine, but but theta goes to zero. Uh, what happens? As theta goes to zero, the sine terms go to zero, and the the cosine terms go to one. So we have here's a cosine. This is one. That's zero. So p over m, and then uh, minus um, this is one minus uh, mu times g. And so uh, here we have, this is now if it were just a horizontal uh, problem. And so I might start, or I could just go and, and solve the original horizontal problem to verify that this is the acceleration that I get. Uh, this makes sense because there's the that's just proportional to the pushing force, which is going to accelerate it faster. And then, and if the larger the coefficient of friction, then the slower the acceleration is going to be. And so, uh, looking at the limiting case, at least as theta go to zero, also makes sense as well.